What is going on guys? Benny here. We are here today to speak about this beautiful piece of gear by Shit Audio. This is their Gungnir multi-bit DAC. They did send this to me for review and all my thoughts are my own as well as what I talk about it. So with that, if you are new to audio and you're new to this channel, welcome and we will talk about this guy right now. All right, guys, so kind of a brief idea of who Shit Audio is. So Shit Audio, they're American made. Everything here is made in America, and that's awesome, right? Um, to some people, they like that. I like that, so I'm going with it. So with that, what do they do? So Shit Audio, in terms of what they make, this is one of the things they make. So they make decks, preamps, tube, tube solid state preamps, tube preamps, speaker amps, <laughs> class A, B speaker amps, um, integrated uh, headphone and speaker amps. <laughs> like, they make a lot of things. Tone controls, turntable now. And one of the, th one of the great things about them is they've always done something with their pricing. They try to make the best sound that they can at a very decent price. And with Shit Audio, for me, historically, they're actually the company that got me into being an audiophile and listening to audio gear. Because I had, I remember buying the, the original Magni and the original Modi. I even bought them on second hand because <laughs> I didn't have much money at the time. And I I always heard about separates, and being that they were kind of small little things, they were pretty small, that I, I didn't think it was going to make a difference, it made a difference. And it sparked my whole love for audio. <clears throat> so being that this is, this is one of their higher end decks, um, not the highest, but almost. This has a lot of the guts from their highest end and it kind of trickled down into this guy. So, if you're new to audio, let's go over what a DAC is. So, with the DAC, what does DAC mean? It's an acronym. An acronym for Digital Analog Converter. Had a brain fart there. So, what is a Digital Analog Converter? So, basically anything that we interface electronically that makes sound has its own DAC. And what it does is it takes the digital signal, whether you're streaming or if it's as a digital file on your phone or iPad or iPod or any MP3 player or whatever, however you consume it digitally. It takes that signal and then converts it into an analog waveform so the physical things such as your speakers or headphones can move. That's all it does. But again, not all DACs are created equal. And we'll kind of go over that right now. So, in terms of this guy, specifically, who is this for? Anyone. <laughs> I would say anyone. This is good for anybody. If you're a beginner and you have the money for this, go ahead, buy it. There's a lot of cool things you can, you can do with this, but I would suggest getting good, better headphones or spending it on speakers first <laughs> and then with this guy, this is kind of one of the, in my in my eyes, one of the last things that you kind of need to buy because you start to train your ear. But if you want to go out the gate and have something that sounds great, and you already have good hand headphones and good speakers, by all means, get this guy. <laughs> so this version, like I said, is the multi-bit version of this. They do make a Delta Sigma version of this. So what's the difference between the multi-bit version and the Delta Sigma version. So with that, a Delta Sigma DAC, which is most DACs nowadays, are basically a DAC chip, which is usually an ESS Sabre chip or an AKM chip. And basically it's like a single processor chip that the digital signal goes into, does a bunch of algorithmic things, spits it out in an analog waveform. This guy is a little bit different. So with this, 
It's a multi-bit DAC. It's basically Shit Audio's version of an R2R DAC. What is an R2R DAC? Let's go over that real quick in a nutshell. So basically what it is, is it's a, in this guy here, on the motherboard somewhere, it has something called a resistor ladder. Basically it's literally a ladder of resistors. So what it does is it takes the digital signal and each bit of that signal goes through that ladder. And basically what it does is when it does that, it tries to be as bit perfect as possible to the digital signal. So it's a little bit different. It's not so much smashing an algorithm like a regular current DAC chips do, but it goes through that ladder and then spits it out as best as it can. So in terms of the characteristics of the tube, a Delta Sigma DAC, if you have like a more mid-fi to a budget version of a Delta Sigma DAC, basically what it, the kind of characteristics of it are, it's a little bit more linear and in terms of the sound stage and how the image looks or how you hear the image rather, it, it feels a little bit more compressed and the sound stage isn't usually very big. Not normally. DACs can be implemented different in different ways and kind of tweaked to sound better in certain ways or worse ways. But with this guy, with an R2R DAC, basically what ends up happening is being that it's going through that resistor ladder, it creates more separation between the instruments as well as vocals and it creates more of an airiness to it. The other thing it does is it kind of warms it up a little bit. So what it ends up doing is you get this beautiful warmth as well. Not a lot of it, but just enough out of this guy. And basically also up top, it does smooth out the, the highs a little bit. It doesn't roll off, it smooths them out. So you still keep the clarity and resolution there. But if you have like a pair of headphones or speakers that are a little bit sibilant or a little bit too sharp, smooths that out. So with that, let's kind of go over the materials and the outside first before I go over the sound and what I think about it. So on the front here, we are greeted by a very clicky source selector. And you do have four, li four lights up here for sources and a fifth light. We'll talk about that fifth light in a second. So with each of these lights from, I don't remember which order they go in, but they do have uh, USB, SPDIF, B, uh, coaxial, and BNC. And then what is this fifth little light on the end? They are white, <laughs> white lights. Um, the fifth light is something that we call, they call BBG, the BBG light. Another acronym, right? So with the BBG light, it stands for buy better gear. <laughs> so basically what it does is if your source is a little bit too jittery, meaning it, it's not stable and it's kind of like all over the place, this light will blink. And if it, it's really bad, it'll stay on. So basically get a better source if you can, uh, where you're getting the source from. So on the back, Kind of turn it around here. So it's kind of heavy. Not too heavy though. So with this, we have the power in here, power switch. Then we have BNC, USB, and coaxial. And then you have two types of audio outputs. Two types of audio ports. Two types of outputs. Your XLR for balance, and then two single-ended RCA outs. So with that, there is something I do want to go over with not just this guy, but other implementations that they have that have unison USB. So this is their implementation of uh, USB input that's specifically for them as a company. So with that, they, they were doing using an off-the-shelf module before, and they didn't like how it sounded. I didn't either. <laughs> I 
I didn't like the sound of it because the noise floor was a little high and it did a little strange things on specific songs because how the, it was implemented in the um, older models, it did some strange things, <laughs> especially on computers. So with that, with this, this was made specifically for them. I believe it's the PIC32 module that they're using specifically for them. And to me, I was testing between the, the USB and the SPDIF. I usually choose SPDIF because it's straight digital. You don't have to put in anything or, or um, download any drivers. And then with this one too, you don't have to download any drivers. It loads it up really well. So you don't have to put in any crap on your computer, which is great. Minimal is best when it comes to USB. But with this guy, I was testing them back and forth. I couldn't tell a difference. I couldn't tell a difference. And as an audiophile, like a little over a decade now, that blows my mind. Because with other USBs and the older module USB that they used, the noise floor was higher and you could hear it. So, but with the, the sound between the two, again, it blew my mind how much better this version of USB that they had. So for me, that, that, that's awesome. Awesome. Okay, so now that I've kind of gotten over that, this is made out of a milled piece of aluminum, screwed together three feet on the bottom. And then on the top here, we do have ventilation holes, but this version, the ventilation holes are covered. There's covers underneath. And basically with that, because this is the multi-bit version of it, you want to keep those little analog pieces, like those resistors and everything, warmer. Because with this guy, because it has that multi-bit R2R ladder in there, it they tend to play better when they're burned in and warm. Because that's what creates that, like I said earlier, that airiness and spaciousness of the soundstage. So for me, what about this specifically in terms of sound? Now we're moving on to sound and how I feel about it. So when it comes to this guy, sound sweet, sweet. I love it. For me, analog tone that this guy gives is exactly what I wanted. And I do believe I will probably buy one of these when I have the money for it. <laughs> so when it comes to this, have, be having an R2R deck like this, it takes the digital signal and it makes it that, gives it that slight warmth. It gives it that good bass extension decent bass extension but control so it it's basically you get the best of both worlds of keeping the resolution and clarity of a delta sigma deck but then giving it that warmth and live feeling it brings out the emotion in it opposed to with some delta sigma decks that can sound cold and not live feeling and sounding and it doesn't induce emotion this guy induces emotion. This is what I want as an individual, specifically me. And I urge you, if you're new to audio, or even an audio file that hasn't heard this guy, or even an R2R deck, let's say you've been listening to audio for like six to seven years and you still haven't listened to an R2R deck, or this deck specifically, a multi-bit version, I would say, do yourself a favor and find a friend or an audiophile group that's locally in your area. And if they have one of these, sit down and give it a good listen. Because in my eyes, once I started listening to this type of DAC, I didn't want to go back. <laughs> I didn't want to go back. I still don't want to go back. But being that I have to review things, I have to listen to them. But again, not all decks are created equal. So with this guy, I would say, 
If you have the money, get it. So that's the next piece that we get to at the end of this review. So with this guy, this guy is $13.99 for the multi-bit version and $800 for the Delta Sigma version. Um, the great thing about this guy is this is the more analog sounding of the higher end decks that they have. The, high, the highest end deck that they have is the Yggdrasil. It's a lot bigger than this one, like bigger. And from what I remember when I was listening to it, it's a little bit more resolute and resolving and less analog, but it still has that sweetness to it, but a little bit more shiny in this, and I would say shiny. Makes, makes everything a little bit more, a little bit cleaner sound. So with that, they do have another deck that's lower than this guy. I don't remember the price of it. It's the Bifrost 2, and it's also, they have a multi-bit version and a Delta Sigma version of it. I think they only sell a multi-bit version of it now, but it has similar characteristics as this one. I don't know if it sounds as sweet as this, but I'm curious to wonder what it sounds like. But if you want that sweet sound, that those rich tones and mids with, again, if you have sibilant headphones or sibilant speakers, this will help, help the up top and smooth it out. And it, this is a, a sound you want to get. I would recommend this a hundred percent. All right, guys. Well, with that, that is the end of this review for this guy. I will have a full review of this guy and the Mjolnir 2 in the next couple weeks. And we will kind of expand upon that on top of this. And then guys, if, again, if you like this video, please subscribe and thumbs up because that always helps. And if you have any questions at all, just put them down in the comments below. And then I will also put the specifications specifically for this guy down below in the description as well as where you can buy it. All right, guys, that is me, Benny. Time to head out. I will see you in the next one.